Hello. Thank you for joining us on trusting and looking at the new world order of life and health through herbs. It's a lot going on, folks. It is a beautiful spring happening. Today is March the 29th. It's only, I can imagine, it, the year is going by so fast, so quick, and things are happening. And with spring being here already, and the funny thing about the way they're talking about, the temperature gets up in the 70s, goes back down in the 40s, then they're talking about uh, could have a freeze warning, and then all the pollen and the blooms and the flowers uh, stop doing what they're doing, and my honeybees are looking for some pollen, and then the cold weather robbed the blooms they're not able to stay there, don't need pollinated, and then we have a shortage of what we need for the bees to have. So, not that that means any difference to you because you really don't have any bees. I do have some honeybees, and I want them to make some beautiful Edgecombe County honey. And um, it's, it's a powerful food to me. I love all the foods that come from the Hive. I love the honeycomb. Uh, it's just like kind of having your built-in wax for chewing gum. Uh, it's good stuff. But one of the things that really is a problem this time of year is allergens and allergies. And, you know, some of them could be a very negative response to our body. So with that in mind, think about what's important to you in your life and your health. As a naturopath, as an individual who loves herbs, and I guess you could refer to it as an herbalist, I am excited. I am excited about what we're in the process of relearning. Yeah, we're relearning something. We're finding out that the magic pharmaceutical drug is not the only way we can get help in our breathing in the springtime. Uh, having a, you know, antihistamine. What is it that you and I need? We need to build it up. Um, switch back over here to my book and help you understand something. It's not all my ideas, but it helps keep me on track. This little folk remedy encyclopedia uh, says, the folk remedy encyclopedia, olive oil, vinegar, honey, and 1,001 other home remedies. I love reading about home remedies. It's so cool. It's so nice. I mean, to me, doing this is respecting my elders. Yeah, I am respecting those who've gone before me and who have trusted God's remedies to help get them through. And for me to honor them by telling you about what they did, some of them are way off the wall, and you just need to leave them alone. But if it works and does no harm, now listen to what I said there, does no harm. And I will give you a good example. Woo! Uh, and you'll understand why I'm going, woo, if you have taken the opportunity to do what I'm going to share with you right quick. Uh, this is at the end of my chapter, so I guess I'm putting the last first so we can talk about that. Uh, a folk remedy stuffed up with hay fever or a cold. Have you ever just stuffed up? Now, I carry my little tefu oil in my uh, pocket most of the time. Uh, and I use it to open up my head, 
in my sinuses. It's really convenient. It's really more convenient than what I'm going to tell you about right here. Um, and that is try some time-tested cure. That's why I'm giving respect to my elders that have used this product of nature that was created by our Creator for our health and well-being. With that in mind, mix up a tablespoon of horseradish. I, I, I'm going to back up. I'm going to suggest you cut that in half. Don't put it, I mean, the recipe for the folk remedy book is mix a tablespoon of horseradish with a bit of honey. I would suggest even a quarter, if you've never done this before, um, I, I want you to be able to do more than break out into a cold sweat. Um, but mix a tablespoon, that's what they're recommending, I'm saying cut it down, of horseradish with a bit of honey. Both ingredients will kill bacteria. So if you got a need to get rid of some bacteria, what did I just say? Horseradish and honey, both of those killing bacteria. While the horseradish will break up mucus and force your sinuses open. Yes, it will. And so I would suggest doing it sparingly. <clears throat> some horseradishes are stronger than others, but if you wanted to open up your head and be able to breathe clearly, and I'm going to say caution in doing it because wasabi, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that green stuff, wasabi. I mean, you can take a pinch of that and you can take it and all of a sudden what's happening? Your eyes are watering and you're going like, can I catch my breath? But it gets the job done and it helps kill any bacteria that may be with what's going on in your uh, breathing in your respiratory system. So that's a natural product, natural ingredients that has a purpose if that's what you're trying to accomplish. So that's why I bring it up that I am honoring my elders because they were the ones that passed these things along to other people in the family. Um, you know, I remember, uh, let's reminisce a little bit. Uh, I remember my Aunt Mary. Uh, my Aunt Mary was the midwife. Uh, Aunt Mary is the one that uh, helped bring me into this world. And she also helped my brother Chris. He's in his 80s. Uh, my brother Reuben. And but <laughs> George didn't get the pleasure of being born in the bedroom. Um, old Dr. Foster up in Norlina uh, had gotten, uh, and I don't know what model car was at the time, but George had gotten into the birthing canal and was twisted and Dr. Foster just couldn't get him the way he needed to get him to get him to come out like he's supposed to. So they were in the process of going to Henderson Hospital, not, yeah, Henderson's Hospital there, and along the way, back then, okay, and George is in his uh, mid to late 70s now, uh, they hit a bump in the road. A pothole and the pothole turned George around and Dr. Foster was able to give him birth. So uh, just this kind of little thing that you hear about family uh, it's kind of cool to know these little stories and, uh, uh, and and you can tease your brother about being a uh, a bump in the road a pothole saved his life you know so those are some of the things that are cool. Right. Thank you for reminiscing with me for a little bit. Uh, it's nice to be able to have an audience that likes for me to tell these stories. 
uh, I am encouraged to do it. Uh, and so, okay, put it in my monologue. Food allergies, take back control of your life. Do you suffer from true food allergy? Merely food sensitivity. You know, it means the difference is the food sensitivity or if it's a, uh, what's going on. It's easy to confuse the two conditions. Um, they can have many of the same symptoms, but while a food intolerance can be an uncomfortable annoyance, a food allergy can turn into a deadly reaction. So don't mess with the allergies, okay? Um, according to Samson, a tolerance in a non-immunical response. This means your body's reaction has nothing to do with your immune system. You suffer from lactose intolerance. For example, if your digestive system doesn't make enough lactose, an enzyme that breaks down the sugar in dairy foods. Other substances that cause different reactions include sulfites, histamines, monosodium glutinate, red wine, chocolate, and artificial colors. Yeah, we take those and we eat them. Some people can't do it because of the results that are gonna happen with that. A true food allergy though, is your immune system overreacting to certain foods. With a food allergy, Samson explains, other organs come in. For example, your skin might break out in a rash, your mouth might tingle, or your throat might tighten up. If your throat tightens up, you're going to start coughing to try to get some air in the airway. You may start wheezing or choking. And the worst case scenario, an apoplectic shock causes your blood pressure to drop dangerously low and your windpipe to close up. Now every year, food allergies hit. Now I'm gonna go back and just kinda of, let's get this into proper perspective. Cause you'll notice some of the books I've got, they've been around for a while. Uh, this one here was published in hmm, 2004. Okay, so this was copyrighted 2004. And with that in mind, I'll go ahead and give you that statistic. Allergy food reactions hit 30,000 people, killing 150 of them. So whether that's more or less now, it doesn't make any difference if you take the ratio of 30,000 people who are allergic to food and 150 die, it's still not a good scenario. According to Samson, although food allergies mostly occur during childhood, some carry over into adulthood. Occasionally they suddenly appear in adults who never had a problem. Is that because of birthdays? I mean, some things do make a difference because of birthdays. Is that one of them? Good question to ask. Uh, hundreds of foods can cause a reaction, but the big eight are, you wanna write them down? Okay, I'll give you a minute. I forgot at the beginning of the show to say, you may want to get the pencil and paper, pen and paper, and make some notes. So I'm gonna give you the eight things that can cause the reaction. Not that the other thing don't, but back in 2004, these eight were at the top of the list. One, shellfish. Okay, that's number one, shellfish. Number two, peanuts. And, and there are some things that can be in the pro processing that can help to eliminate some of the things. But if you know or you think you know that you have a reaction to something, leave it alone. Be smart enough to treat yourself to say, hey, I like me enough not to eat them shellfish. I like me enough not to eat those peanuts. 
tree nuts like walnuts, cashews, pecans, and almonds. Okay? Other things can be milk, eggs, fish, soybeans, and wheat. And the, the people who are experts discover that even such an unlikely food as zucchini can bring on a reaction. So can inulin, a carbohydrate found in some processed food, and in vegetables like artichokes and hickory. I said hickory. It's chicory. Now, I like my chicory. You know why I like chicory? I like it in coffee. And it's a blend. Uh, it usually comes out of Louisiana, and it has a blend of chicory in the coffee that gives it a unique flavor. Okay? Uh, let's see here. As dangerous as food allergies are, you can manage to, you can learn to manage them safely. So let's talk about some common sense folk remedy in an encyclopedia that's been put together. So that's what we've got cooking right there. All right. Um, get a diagnosis. Find out if you do have. When you have a certain reaction after eating a food, I mean, stay in touch with Doc, okay? And the doctor can determine and begin treating the real cause, whether it's an allergy, intolerance, or something totally different, like a case of food poisoning, celiac disease, or an ulcer. And the doctor may even refer you to an allergist. First of all, I think it's good common sense to get a diagnosis, if there is one, and you can do and treat yourself according to your physician's interpretation of what they have done to find out about what you're dealing with. And remember to tell your physician about what's going on. Because if they know what's going on, then we can come up with a proper treatment for what is happening to you at this point in your life. <clears throat> And it's something kind of simple. Get your pen and get a book, a diary, and write down when you eat something that you have a reaction to. And that will help the doctor pinpoint exactly what's ailing you. Also note your symptoms, how the food was prepared, and if someone else got sick. It may not be you. It may be somebody else's cooking. Mm. Learn what foods trouble you. Ask your doctor about cross sensitization. This means you could be an allergic to a family of foods. A reaction to shrimp could be a sign of an allergy to lobster or crab as well. Think about the likeness of those three things. The crustacean, the crab, lobster, shrimp. It may be uh, the family gotta go. They don't need them no more, okay? On the other hand, Oils made from certain foods like peanut or soybeans, I mean, they could be safe to eat once the refining process removes 
most of the allergy called allergy causing ingredients. Now, so processing could take things away from the oils. However, there are always exceptions, including cold pressed and foreign processed oils and those used in restaurants. There again, talk to your healthcare professional about doing, before you do something, before you try different types of oil, get an understanding. No need to make yourself sick because of ignorance. Okay. Now, just say for example, someone who fixes food, a chef, um, could use the same teaspoon in vegetable stir-fry that he used in peanut chicken. If you're very sensitive to the nuts, that could cause a deadly reaction. Do you hear what I say? Ignorance on the person that's preparing your food. I mean, here it is, I got a spoon, I'm gonna get me uh, some um, vegetable stir-fry and use peanuts and chicken and then find another oil to use it, but you had it in the same spoon. And so that could be something that's not very healthy for you in the ignorance zone or a food preparer. Prevent this from happening by asking questions. Double check ingredients listed in the menu. And don't hesitate to quiz your waiter or even the chef about the exact ingredients of a f dish. In other words, what's in it? Is it something that I am allergic to? Is it something I need to stay away from? Well, then do. But know that you have something to stay away from. If, they, if you think you're nutty, remind them you could die from eating the wrong food. In fact, they'll take your questions more seriously if you let them know you're allergic. And they don't want that to happen. So be prepared for what you need. Be wary of ingredient list. Uh, packaged foods can hide your allergens where you least expect it. Snack cakes, for instance, can contain certain amount of nuts, and that soup packet may be enriched with powdered milk. Labels don't always say when products contain one of the big eight. Recently, the Food Allergy Issues Alliance suggested the food industry begin simply clearly labeling products containing major food allergens. The FDA also plans to get involved, promising a spot check food processing plants to make sure allergy causing foods are not contaminating other foods by accident. You know, it may sound redundant and it may sound stupid uh, when you're eating a peanut and on the warning label it says may contain peanuts or almonds or cashews, you know, Brazil nuts. Because they are making sure that your life and your health continues in a good way and not in a challenge and could be detrimental way. So that's what we're talking about. I mean, you hear this a lot in dating, but what about in foods? Going to prepare food and dating? Yeah, just say no. <laughs> you didn't know that was coming, did you? Just say no. Doctors do not have a cure for food allergies yet. So sometimes it's safest just to avoid a type of food or restaurant altogether. Chinese restaurants could be one no-no for peanut allergy sufferers since the chance of cross-contamination is high. Restaurant desserts often contain flavorings or extracts that even the chef won't know about. 
and street vendors might be less likely to reveal allergy causing ingredients. What can you do about that? What can you do about something that may cause you an allergy? Well, first of all, wash it away. Good kitchen hygiene is a big part of guarding against cross-contamination. Says the Food and Allergy Network, after using any utensil, cutting board, pot or pan, it's important to wash it carefully with soap and hot water to remove all allergen particles. It's, it's a process. And I like that way of looking at it. Just say no to some stuff. Good kitchen hygiene is a big part of guarding against cross-contamination. So think about soap and hot water on your hands. Carry emergency medication. The Dr. Sampson says, wherever you go, medicine to stop allergy reactions should go to the most common emergency treatment, a shop of epinephrine or adrenaline requires a prescription. That's one more reason to see a doctor about your condition. And another thing, um, wear a medical alert bracelet or to make sure put an allergen description of what's going on in your life in your wallet, your purse, so it can be available if you run into a situation because if you could not respond, I mean, it's just like going to the dentist and they gave me some epinephrine. I started fading out. And that was something I did not know I had an allergy to. So we had to make that. And on my medical records, when I go to the dentist, I said, what do you have written down that says I'm allergic to. And let's make the date, the list up to date. Um, have a positive attitude? Absolutely. Just because you have a food allergy doesn't mean you have to live on bread and water. <laughs> you can still eat many of the foods you enjoy if you need support for other allergy sufferers not to mention advice from medical experts, Samson suggests contacting the Food Allergy and Anaphylactic Network. Either visit them on the website at, here you go, something for you to remember, www.foodallergy.org. So, dot www.foodallergy.org or, or contact the old fashioned way. They're in Fairfax, Virginia. And uh, the phone number is 800 929 4040. That's the old way of doing things by telephone. Or if you wanted to write them a letter, you could do that at 1000, I mean 10,400 Eaton Place, Suite 107, Fairfax, Virginia. Okay, um, we're talking about allergies and we're talking about things that eating and so forth, but what about on the skin? What about hidden sources of skin rashes where you break out and you wonder, what in the world happened? Where, where did that come from? Um, that's something we need to pay attention to. Um, You use them to stay healthy and beautiful, but the toiletries you rely on every night and day may be skin's worst enemy. So here it is, we're trying to stay the best we can, what we got to work with, so we're always looking for something to help uh, keep us pretty, keep the skin, get rid of the wrinkles, etc. Things like 
perfumes, moisturizers, sunscreens, astringents, deodorants, antiperspirants, shampoos, soaps, dyes, and nail polish. And uh, the average adult uses at least seven of these skin products every day. And you may be using more. These plus toilet paper, tissues, dryer sheets, household skin products, all contain ingredients that could irritate your skin. So the first thing, if you're breaking out in something, stop and ask, what am I doing? Well, I don't really know what I'm doing, so maybe I should ask it this way. What could I be doing that's causing me to break out and be allergic to something? Okay, good place to start. To become more aware of hidden chemicals, read product labels for known rash offenders, like your fragrances, your preservatives, and skin conditions and lanolin. But even with these precautions, you still might not learn all the ingredients since companies don't always accurately report every additive in their product. In fact, at recent study, they studied 67 different skin creams and found that almost half of them were mislabeled. You know, if I've got you coming in and buying Miss Claiborne product, you know, the woman that's not my wife, Liz Claiborne, um, and she has this product, and she's got this secret ingredient in there that makes it sell for three times more than it's worth, um, three times more than uh, something else. You think they're gonna tell you everything? Nah, they're gonna make you, make them prove it. Okay, here's how to save your skin from potential troublemakers. What can you do? Ration the water and the soap. Healthy skin in your first line of defense against allergy reactions and infections. Dried and, if your skin is dry and cracked, allows bacteria a direct route to your bloodstream. If your skin's already dry, choose only mild soaps. You know, some, you know, something like a beauty bar. I tell you what, if you come in to remedy this naturally, um, there's a couple soaps in there that really are great and have a traditional history. Uh, Miracle Soap, Miracle 2, uh, Dr. Bronner's, uh, and these individual soaps can make a major difference. There's some with goat, goat, you know, milk made that way. So check them out, see what it is, and read the label, please. Just because it's in the health food store doesn't mean it's so pure that somebody may be somebody may be allergic to it. So you just got to work and be good to yourself. Try it. Um, use as little as possible lather, lather with lukewarm water and rinse with cool water. After a shower or tub, rinse in a moisturizer to fight uh, future dryness. Um, you know, there's other things. Uh, we talked about the skin. What about the nails? You know, uh, think about this for a moment. How much we dig, skin gets dry, and then all of a sudden, you got that dry residue, that's what I'm gonna call it, underneath your skin. And now there's some of you that do this. You actually clean the residue from your fingers into your mouth and it's got bacteria, okay? According to the American Academy of Dermatologists, Allergic reactions are the most common problems 
caused by nail care products. You can develop itching, burning, and pain under or around your nail and even on your face and your neck. Acrylic nails, polish, and nail hardeners contain formaldehyde and other compounds and most often cause reactions. If you go to a salon for artificial nails, make sure they don't use uh, MMA, methyl acrylate, a product banned in many states. The, the AAD says to notice strong odors in the salon, extremely hard artificial nails are ones that don't soak, don't soak off easily. These signs of MMA sell and a report for the State Board of Health. In other words, you got this going on, you need to report the State Board of Health so they quit using this stuff. Um, it, no, it, this is, I'm saying this in a nice way. It's amazing the extremes that can be gone to to get someone to notice how beautiful our nails are, how beautiful our skin is, and then we put ourselves through negative stuff and it causes a problem, it causes an allergy, it causes disruption, okay? This is a very simple. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm about to get you in trouble because I'm going to ask this gal to do something. I'm going to ask her to do something to find out what you gave her was for real or not. And by that I mean appraise your jewelry. <laughs> that wasn't nice at all, was it? If you develop a rash after wearing a piece of jewelry, you are probably allergic to the nickel in it. Try stainless steel or other nickel-free jewelry instead. Even if you're not allergic to your jewelry, take it all off when you wash. Rings and other pieces can trap rash-causing wetness near the skin. So find out if that ring is really what it's supposed to be, that necklace, that bracelet, and find out, even the ankle bracelet. I would find out if, what it's made out of or if it's causing a problem. I mean, if it's not causing a problem, what I'm telling you about, don't even worry about it. But if it is causing a problem, you need to do something about it. But I bet you hadn't thought about that, had you? Could it be the rash that you're getting from that jewelry is because the person that gave it to you insinuated it was silver or gold and it could just be plain long nickel? Let me know what happens. No, don't come looking for me because I made her smart. <laughs> this is so good. Uh, forget the fragrance. Whether it's shampoo, hairspray, or body lotion. Most items in your bathroom contain fragrances. Even products labeled unscented include something to mask the unpleasant smells of other chemicals. If you need to be sure about head and fragrances, look for fragrant free or without perfume on the package. And if that fragrant free or without perfume, that's what I like using. It doesn't give me that aromatic aroma that people say, ooh, what you wearing, boy? No, it don't give me that. But thing is, I am concerned that my body is not put under duress or stress. And these chemicals can do that to us. Um, I would say be concerned about your makeup. Stick with hypoallergenic, non 
comedogenic and non acinogenic brands. They're the healthiest of your skin because they cause fewer allergies and don't plug up your pores. It's also a good idea to use water-soluble cosmetics since you don't need harsh solvents to remove them. Replace eye makeup every three months and never share cosmetics. Ooh, Lord. Don't be reaching in somebody else's pocketbook or and using their stuff that they put on their face because you never know where their hands have been. Mm -mm. Boy, did I get the medal in that time. If you didn't hear me, that's okay. Beware of hair care. That's only for people who have it. If you got hair, let's talk about care. Always test hair color first on a patch of skin, like behind your ear or on the inside of your elbow. When it comes to curls, give your hair a break. Wait at least three months between perms and ask your hairdresser about gentle, non-irritating products. And there's another thing that you can have an allergy to, and that would be antiprespirant allergies. You know, avoid them. Don't use your deodorant on irritated skin or just shaved areas. And be careful not to apply them outside your armpits. The skin can be most sensitive. Now, I will Gonna got an issue there. What I like using for my aftershave, for the parts I do shave, um, I use my silver. I use silver gel, and it's antifungal, it's antibacterial, it's antimicrobial. You know, it does these things. So if I have got a, an abrasion on my face or something like that. And not only that, I can use that silver in my mouth, they even have the toothpaste. Then I like to use the silver gel on the, on the skin, my, and my teeth, my gums. It's a powerful product. And that's Silver Soul Gel. Check it out at Remedy This Naturally, 1140 Benvenue Road. Come see us. Hey, um, this coming week in, it's going to be Easter. Um, think about the meaning and the reason for the season. And think about the resurrection of our Creator so you and I can have life and have it more abundantly forever and ever. Amen. Consider rubber. Experts say to wear gloves when you're working around the house and in the garden. They can protect your hands from harsh chemicals, drying cleansers, and allergy-causing plants. Be careful, though. You might be allergic to the rubber found in some gloves. You'll know it by the itching and burning. You'll feel wherever the rubber touches the skin. You could even develop hives. So think about it. Rubber elastic bands in uh, clothing can bring on this reaction in some people. If this is the case for you, don't give up to gloves and underwear. Just switch to the product made some other material like cloth, vinyl, or leather. Um, some people don't think about that. They, they, they don't wear a belt, and they wonder how the pants gonna stay up. It's got elastic in there. That elastic could be irritating you, and a right around your line where the um, rubber is meeting the skin, it may break out. So if it is, quit using that. You've got to throw them pants away. 
Uh, okay. I would say, in most cases, you don't need to be like Sherlock Holmes looking for the answer to why you're having rash. Just test your theory by avoiding the product to see if the rash goes away. If you still aren't sure, give up your skincare products at the same time. No matter what causes your skin condition, make sure to visit your dermatologist anytime you have a severe reaction. Find out what it is, what you gotta do to clean it up. Quit putting that toxin and poison through your skin. And cleaners that you use for the baseboards and house and you don't put them on, you'll start at some point uh, maybe getting tingling in your hands. Um, it's kind of like the feeling is when you have slept on your arm and you wake up and they're going, ah, ooh, am I going to get it back? Is it going to fall off? You know, that type of thing. Um, let's talk about this and get it rocked in right quick. Simple solutions that will scratch your itch. Simple solutions, let's get them done. It's easy to irritate the skin. Anything from the sun to toxic plants, dust mites, and other pests can cause allergic rashes, itching, and sores. And now it's easy and cheap to treat this kind of reaction. Just don't rush out and pay a fortune for expensive creams and ointments. Try some natural remedies from Remedy This Naturally and don't rub your sensitive skin the wrong way. Brew a healing pot. Okay, here we go, we're gonna brew something now. We're gonna talk about the folk remedy. Just a few cups of oolong tea may let you say so long to itchy, flaky skin caused by types of allergic disorders called dermatitis. In a clinical trial, drinking one liter of this Chinese brew every day improves symptoms within one or two weeks. At the end of a month, two thirds of those in the study reported relief. Experts believe oolong tea contains certain compounds that block allergy reactions. Let's take a go and get up an ancient cure. Aloe vera may have been one of the key ingredients used to prevent ancient Chinese mummies. They didn't prevent them, they preserved them. But you don't have to wait hundreds of years for the skin saving benefits. The soothing liquid found inside the plump leaves of the aloe vera plant relieve all kinds of skin problems. Use it in fresh, or substitute one of the most aloe-based products you'll find at the health food store, remedy this naturally. There is one there, there. Not only does aloe work on the outside, aloe works on the inside. And by that I mean, there's uh, one we've got called Stomach Comfort. It has herbs and aloe in it. And there are aloe, that the gel, the drink, Aloe is fantastic for healing, soothing, and putting out the fire in the gut. Oh, aloe creams, gels, and lotions soothe itching, rashes, and sunburns, and blisters. And summer is coming. Get your aloe on hand. Apply aloe lip balm to ease painful cold sores and drink aloe juice for mouth ulcers. Remember, though, these products vary in quality and strength. If you don't get results with one, try a different brand or go to a dependable living plant. Yes, I've got my little baby aloes. Uh, they're coming right along. They're, they're just really neat. I love them. And all you do is just maintain them right there on the dining room table until they get bigger and then we put them in something bigger. Gather a bouquet of healing blooms. Pick pot or garden marigolds, also known as calendula for a colorful posy or a tea to soothe irritable skin. Steep the flowers in water and place in a tea-soaked cloth over your rash. 
you'll be amazed how much better you feel. In addition, use calendula tea as a rinse for sores in your mouth. Calendula is also in oils, creams, ointments, and help wounds heal fast. Remedy this naturally, 1140 Benvenue Road. Another flower, <coughs> uh, chamomile, contains its own healing ingredient. In European tests, chamomile cream was almost as effective as hydrocortisone in relieving some pain, some skin problems. Hmm. God's pharmacy actually does something for the creation of man that God loves and doesn't want to hurt. Mm. Apply a poultice. You may know what a poultice is. You may not know what a poultice is, but if you're suffering from a skin rash, you'll want to try one right away. This old-fashioned remedy is basically any warm, thick mixture of herb, water, and other ingredients that you spread on your skin and cover with a cloth. A witch hazel poultice can help dry up an oozing rash and relieve pain. Stir five to 10 heaping teaspoons of finely chopped witch hazel leaves in a cup of water, bring it to a boil and simmer for five to 10 minutes then strain. Press the wet leaves against your rash and cover the area with a warm cloth and hold it in place. A poultice made with crushed flax seeds mixed with hot water can also soothe and protect your irritated skin. One understanding about this, do not use the mixture when it's hot. Use the hot to draw out the ingredients in the flax seed. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Say nuts to a skin annoyance. Tannins in the leaves of the English English walnut act as an astringent, tighten skin tissue, and helping dry up any discharge. Boil five tablespoons chopped leaves in a cup of water, strain the mixture, and soak a soft cloth in the liquid Apply to compress two to four times of a day. Um, on the English walnut, now we're talking about the um, the leaves. And you remember though, if you don't want to use the nut because the news of nut of uh, walnut will actually turn uh, and cause the skin to darken. Uh, another nutty situation is almond oil. You'll often find in almond oil ointment, experts consider almond oil safe, but if you have food allergies, consider a different treatment. Um, we're doing good. I tell you what, I hope you guys really like this stuff and thank you, you know, talking about allergies. It's just a little bit of difference. You know, we talked about allergies on the skin. First of all, most people want to say when you talked about allergies is chew, you know, that type of thing. But it's other things that your body is out of balance and to get it back in balance, help it, help it, help it. Stay away some things that are causing it. Okay. A fungus found at the foot of Mount Tatsukuha in Japan might be the best hope for treating the intense itching, swelling, cracking, and inflammation of eczema. About one out of every 17 people suffer from chronic skin disease, also called trophic dermatitis. Although doctors often prescribe steroids for eczema, they don't always work and you have a serious side effect. It's been 40 years since eczema sufferers have seen any new treatment. That's why scientists are excited about a new class of steroid-free medication called tropical immuno, immunomodulatory 
of steroid-free liquid immunomodule, TIM, made from the Japanese fungus. Two of these proto prototypic, let me go on to the end of this thing. If you're living with this physical, look up the word TIMs and uh, talk to your dermatologist about it. That just got, got me way tongue-tied out of there. That ain't good until the end of the show with something to get you tongue-tied. So, um, let's do one quickie, and that is make sure if you want to open up that sinuses and you want to use the folk remedy, this is what we started with, stuffed up with hay fever or a cold, Try the time-tested cure. Mix a tablespoon of horseradish and a bit of honey. Both ingredients will kill bacteria, while the horseradish will break up mucus and force your sinuses open. Again, my recommendation, do it slowly and not as intense. I hope you have found something that will give you hope that this allergy season that is upon us and will go about us will be easy on us, and we've learned from the Folk Remedy Encyclopedia ways to handle it. God bless you. Claybert Olsman here. Come see us at Remedy This Naturally, 1140 Benvenue Road. Check out the contract post office and the food area. Bye.